In a monetary system, a numerical value is assigned to property so that it can be traded. That is not the same as barter. With barter, your neighbor comes to you and says, hey, can I get a cup of sugar? And you give your neighbor a cup of sugar because you know next week you're going to need to go to your neighbor and say, hey, can I get a cup of milk? With trade, a cup of sugar equals a cup of milk. But with barter, you are exchanging a social obligation. You do not want to tell your neighbor no because you do not want your neighbor to tell you no. You want your neighbor to be indebted to you. You do not want to be indebted to your neighbor. Some people try to tell me that Native American tribes would trade with one another. No. Native Americans had no written language. They had no written numbers. It was the Roman Empire that invented numerals, Roman numerals. Without numerals, it was not possible for Native Americans to have a value-based trade system. They bartered. One tribe would go fishing in the spring. They would take some of the extra fish to another tribe and say, hey, we got you some fish. That tribe would harvest a bunch of corn in the summer, and they would take it back to the other tribe and say, hey, we got you some corn. With barter, you do not know what you're going to get back, when you're going to get it back, if you're going to get anything back at all. Maybe the corn didn't grow that year. In a monetary system, resources are stored in barns, banks, and warehouses. Native Americans had no barns, no banks, no warehouses. If a group of Native Americans went hunting, they did not bring the buffalo home, cut it up into pieces, and put it in their freezer so they could eat tomorrow while their neighbors were hungry today. They said, hey, everybody, we got buffalo. We're all eating good tonight. Woohoo! They would be rich men. They would be on the Fortune 500 list because they can feed the entire tribe, not just themselves. Some people believe that Native Americans were savages that would fight and war with each other over land and resources. That's not true. There may have been a few aggressive tribes, but for the most part, Native Americans had such abundance of wealth and prosperity, they did not need to fight with one another. And I have a witness, a man named Christopher Columbus. It seems Mr. Columbus kept a diary of his journey to America, a journal. And when he returned to Europe, he presented his diary to the queen and told her that he has found a land of wealth and prosperity beyond her wildest imagination. He writes in his diary, They do not bear arms, nor do they know them. For I showed them a sword. They took it by the, e by the edge and cut themselves out of ignorance. Does that sound like a group of warring people that would fight for resources and land? People that walked around without weapons, unarmed, that didn't know what weapons were? No, it's a monetary system that leads to people fighting over land and resources. You had England and Spain and France. They were all fighting and warring with one another while the Native Americans were living over here in peace and harmony with each other. He writes in his diary, The Indians are so naive and free with their possessions that no one who has not witnessed them would believe it. When you ask them for something they have, they never say no. To the contrary, they offer to share with anyone. People from a monetary system just simply put do not believe that people would give away anything they own. They're so used to protecting and hoarding their resources that the concept of just giving them away is so foreign that you do not believe it. But I witnessed it at these rainbow gatherings, just like Christopher Columbus witnessed it, but he was ignorant to tribalism. He did not understand the Native American lifestyle to understand that he was supposed to give back to them. He just thought he could take whatever he wanted because that's what a monetary system leads to. He goes on to say, they would make fine servants. With 50 men, we could subjugate them all and make them do whatever we want. Excuse me? You meet a group of peaceful people that will give you anything you ask of them, and your first thought is to make them your slaves, and you honor this man, you build statues and teach children to look up to him? Oh, I think not. I think it's time we begin to honor Native Americans. It was a Native American named Little Hawk that taught me this about tribalism. Little Hawk is legendary at these rainbow gatherings, and in the next video, I'm going to honor him. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you check the playlist because you do not want to miss this one. Thanks for watching.